Welcome to the Rummage Workshop. This week, um, I'm going to be working on a piece that has actually been in my marketplace inventory for quite some time, and it is just not selling. I actually think that this piece might be a little bit too outdated and traditional for the Denver market. So the plan is to give it a modern, fresh coat of paint and to really expose the wood grain on those uh, center drawers. So first things first, I give the entire piece a really good look over. I open up every single drawer, see if they're functioning properly. And then I take a look to see if there's any veneer or wood that needs to be repaired. But we're really in luck with this one. It is pretty much perfect. So even though this piece is really clean, I'm still gonna go over every inch of it with a TSP alternative just to make sure there's no grease or grime anywhere. Next, I remove all of the hardware and just keep it in a safe place. So I find that old Tupperware containers work really, really well for this or Chinese to-go containers, whatever you have on hand. It's just really not fun to have to hunt down that hardware later and especially the screws because sometimes these older pieces have screws that are just like, that's the one it's supposed to go with. <laughs> So I'm just carefully prying away the hardware uh, on the doors here because there's just some pin nails holding everything in place. So I just want to make sure I'm not causing any damage as I remove it. Now that this piece is all prepped and ready to go, it's time to start sanding. So I'm going to use 150 grit sandpaper to start uh, lightly taking off the surface or the, the finish of this drawer front. So we have a little problem. I was under the impression that this was a solid wood drawer front. Um, it is not. Instead, it is a very, very thin modern veneer. And unfortunately, I did sand through the veneer on just the little edge of the corner, and that's when I immediately stopped sanding. Ugh, it just breaks my little furniture refinisher's heart. <laughs> But this is not the end of the world. We're just going to take a different tactic. So I'm going to start out by just slowly taking off the finish with my sander and then moving to a hand sander from there. Okay, let's get back at it. So I'm gonna take my sander and just do a single pass across the entire surf surface of this drawer to give myself a head start on removing the finish. So from here, I'm just gonna pull out my hand sander, which is actually just a piece of 150 grit sandpaper wrapped around a sanding block. So I'm being careful to work in the direction of the wood grain as I'm sanding. I'm also taking a towel periodically to just wipe away the sanding dust so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So now that everything is looking really even and all the original finish has been removed, I'm pulling out a 220 grit sanding block. I run this over the surface in the direction of the wood grain and this just makes the end product really buttery smooth and soft. I also used a little sanding sponge in the same grit 220 uh, to get over the little waves on this drawer a little easier. Next, I'll pull out my little secret weapon when it comes to wood refinishing. It is just a little piece of brown paper. I'll run it over the surface a couple times and it, it ends up giving me that really buttery smooth finish that I'm looking for. I'm coming in with 150 grit sanding block to scuff up the surface of this piece to give my paint something really, really good to adhere to. After wiping off the sanding dust that we just created, we are now officially ready to paint.
I added three coats of paint to this piece and now I'm just coming in with a sanding pad between each layer to make sure that everything is really, really smooth before putting it on another coat of paint. I'm finishing this piece off with a layer of Varathane Ultimate Polyurethane to make sure that this piece is wipeable and scratch resistant in the end. To seal the drawers, I'm using a spray-on oil-based polyurethane by Minwax. After the first layer has dried, I'll go in with a 400 grit sanding pad to smooth everything out between layers. Let me remind you of what this piece looked like before. It was outdated and definitely a little too traditional for my market. And then here's the finished product. this piece turned out. I think it is like a night and day difference from how it started out. It went from like something you would see in your grandmother's dining room to something that you'd see as like a focal point in a downtown loft. <laughs> oh, I'm so frustrated because I forgot to get footage of spray painting the hardware and honestly I think that's the part that gave this piece the cool factor that it was missing might have been one of my easiest flips yet. Like this thing was clean. Um, it didn't have anything broken on it. Nothing went horribly wrong. Oh no, we did, I did sand through that little spot on the drawer. That sucked, my heart was broken. <laughs> but all in all, it was a really, really simple flip. Now let's talk the numbers on this piece. Um, I really did not spend a lot because I purchased this piece for $32 from a local thrift store and I, th I think I'm under a hundred bucks on this flip which is pretty good for how large the piece is because um, I was able to salvage the original hardware, I didn't have to buy new legs for it, I didn't have to replace any parts. Really this is like if every flip could go this well. I'd be just amazing, but it never does. <laughs> oh, if you keep following along, you'll know that it never goes that easy. Um, yeah, this one is, this might be one of my favorites, to be honest, in the sense of like what it looked like before and what it looks like after. I'm having a hard time let it, letting go of this piece. I kind of actually want to keep it, but it would make no sense in my home, so it's going to get sold. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you guys all here next week. Bye. <laughs>